Early yesterday morning, Attorney General Maura Healey joined State Senator Sonia Chang-Diaz and Harvard Professor Danielle Allen on the list of Democratic candidates, in addition to Republican Jeff Deal. We're in a hard time now, but we're going to get through it. And we're going to go on and we're going to build forward in ways that we can even imagine right now. That's what excites me. And that's what I want to bring to this as your next governor. I'm joined by former Boston City Councilor and mayoral candidate Tito Jackson and Jennifer Nassour, former chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party and founder and president of the Pocketbook Project. Good to see you both. Tito, let me start with you. Ben Downing, another Democrat who had been running for governor, dropped out of the race a few weeks before Healy got in because of her impending candidacy. He said he looked at the fundraising numbers and he just wasn't going to be able to raise enough money to stay competitive this year. If you are Danielle Allen or Sonia Chang-Diaz, how do you make this a competitive race moving forward? And there, before I let you answer, we'll see. Maura Healy brings $3.6 million to her run compared to $370,000 for Danielle Allen, $249,000 for Sonia Chang-Diaz, and $104,000 for Jeff Deal. So how do her fellow Democrats try to make this a race, Teter Jackson? Uh, so I, I know a little bit about uh, those uh, types of numbers uh, <laughs> from <laughs> a race that I had in uh, 2017. Uh, Danielle, I think, is besting me by $20,000 $20, uh, right now. A um, couple things. It's early. Uh, and I know uh, folks, Adam, folks like you, uh, y'all spent a whole lot of money um, doing kind of on the Jennifer tip on the pocketbook project. Uh, you guys like to just look at our uh, actual dollars. And I think, you know, when you look at my race in 2017, um, there's no way I should have gotten 35% of the vote um, simply because I only had $350,000. If you look at my race in 2009, um, out of 16 people, um, I came in fifth. I had like 50 or 60 grand. The top person at that point, John Conley, had 450,000. You should not know my name. And so I think there's something to be said about the type of door-to-door -door, uh, grassroots campaign that actually engages people. This is some of the most difficult economic times that people have had, difficult uh, public health times, difficult, difficult mental health times. So this is, an, uh, this is not a fait accompli for anyone um, in uh, this space. The issues uh, are, are there. And by the way, they cut across racial uh, um, uh, aspects, um, economic aspects. Everybody is having a hard time. So you need a candidate who's going to get into the tone and tenor, roll her sleeves up or his sleeves up um, or their sleeves up uh, in order to actually make this uh, happen. Dollars are the one thing that you can see, uh, but doors, uh, connections, and uh, empathy you may not be able to see and you might be surprised. Your point about not overstating the importance of money is well taken. I remember being part of a conversation in Greater Boston when Jim Browdy was hosting and there was a, a Republican operative telling me there was no way that Donald Trump could become the Republican nominee because Jeb Bush had however much money Jeb Bush had. And we all know how that turned out. Jennifer Nassour, uh, Maura Healey, to me, and, and this might get into some of what Tito was just talking about, she seems to me in the past few weeks to be making a slow motion play for independents who might have voted for Charlie Baker if he sought a third term. I want to pull up a tweet she sent before she was an announced candidate for governor, but back when Governor Baker said he wasn't going to seek a third term. In that tweet, Maura Healey said, I want to thank Mass Governor for his service to this state. He's been a valued partner to my office and to me. I have deep respect for the way he has led with a focus on respect and finding common ground. Jennifer Nassar, do you think she has a chance of getting people who uh, would have voted for Baker if he sought another uh, term to back her in the general? Well, first of all, I'd like to say um, thank you for having me on the show. Oh, thanks for um, being here. <laughs> and to you but, too, Tia. Uh, but more importantly, I think, you know, number one, her tweet was much nicer than the statement that the Massachusetts Republican Party put out. So that was very kind of her. <laughs> and I think most people, most people found working with Governor Baker um, put them on common ground and they had someone who was listening to them, not someone who was attacking them, not someone who is always on the defense um, and, and someone who that they and it was someone who is a good manager who is used to running a company, having employees come in and have a 
conversation. I think that the thing that Maura Healy is going to face, though, now is the curse of the AG. From what you heard from her statement was it was very much empty rhetoric, right? It wasn't anything specific. It was just, here's what we're doing in the future, and, and it's going to be bright and rosy, but there wasn't anything else. And, and I absolutely agree with Tito, and maybe this is one of a few times that I will absolutely agree with Tito, but what he said about the money issue, it doesn't matter how much money you have as long as you're actually doing the work. And what we had seen with Martha Coakley back in her race with Scott Brown and with her race with Charlie Baker was that she took for granted that yes, her name was known, but she didn't do the work that was needed to be done. And so I think that that is one problem that she might face against the other two. For what it's worth, which isn't necessarily much of anything, my take was that that happened in the Brown race and she shifted gears a little bit but couldn't get it done against Charlie Baker, but that's a convo for another time. And um, oh, Tito, you wanted to hop in? I, I, yeah, I did, I did want to hop in. Maura is no joke and she is not a punk. Um, and so we also have a competitor you have someone who, by the way, was an underdog. She was not supposed to win. She was not known. Her money. Uh, you know, so, so the piece is. Let's also. I, what I want to say. She's obviously as a Democrat. She's the front runner, um, and I believe she's a, uh, a front runner uh, statewide. Uh, but it's still up to her uh, to prove to the voters um, that she deserves the job. But she is the obvious, and and I, I can't um, fathom uh, that anyone else could could debate me uh, strongly on this, uh, the front runner um, in, in, in this race. So I, I, I see a real competitor um, and I also see a finisher um, to use a basketball term.